So the next problem is an expression with negative exponents. Uh, what is particularly tricky about this problem is that there are negative signs both in the exponent and in the baseline. And those two types of negative signs behave very differently. <coughs> this problem can be solved in several different ways. This is just going to be one of the possible ways. Also, I find that in case of these exponents problems, it's sort of on a case-by-case -case basis of which order we apply and which rules. Okay, so let's, let's start. So first, I can simplify between negative 10 and 8. They are both divisible by 2. So yeah, minus 5 here, 4 here. So minus e to the 6th power. That is a tricky part of the problem as well. Minus e to the 6th power. That can be interpreted as minus 1 times e to the 6th power. And then which rule? So here are, here are the rules of exponents. In this particular case, this rule, this fourth one here, can be applied. And then minus 1 to the 6 times a to the 6. And negative 1 raised to the 6th power is plus 1. So we have a to the 6. So notice that if this exponent were odd, then the result would have been minus e to the 5 or 7 or whatever that odd exponent was. So we can simplify this expression as e to the 6. Now with this one, we're going to apply the third rule, which is about repeated exponentiation. Then we can multiply the, the, the exponents. So we're going to have b to the negative 3. So we're done with the numerator e to the minus 3, well, one way to handle it is we can rewrite it as a to the positive 3 in the numerator, but I'm also seeing this a to the 8 here, so I'm just going to combine these two using the very first rule, that if the base is the same, multiplication means add the exponents, so a negative 3 plus 8 is 5, so we're going to have a to the 5 in the denominator, and then we have negative b to the seventh power and to the negative fourth power. Again, the base is the same, so we can just rewrite it as negative b to the seven plus negative four third power. Okay. So in the next line, I'm just gonna, we're just gonna get rid of this parenthesis. We're gonna simplify, we're not touching the rest. So we're just gonna carry those parts. Well, actually, now that we see between a to the 6 and a to the 5, that's an easy cancellation. There is just one a left in the numerator. And now b to the minus 3 here. And this, minus b can be interpreted as negative 1 times b. And then when we do the exponentiation factor by factor via rule number 4, and then we'll find that this one is going to stay negative because minus 1, negative 1 to the third power, is negative 1. One more thing, we should, we should probably use the parenthesis because sometimes I see my students read this as subtraction. It's not. It's just one big chain of multiplication and division. All right. We're almost done. We could ask, are we done? We are not done yet because the letter B appears twice. That, that can be simplified. So let's take care of that. Using rule number 7 here, we can rewrite B to the negative 3 in the numerator. We can rewrite that as B to the plus 3 in the denominator. So that's what we'll do. The next thing I will do is to get rid of the parenthesis as well. We're going to have negative 4 b cubed times b cubed, that's b to the 6 in the denominator, and minus 5a in the numerator. Are we there yet? No, we're not there because there are two negative signs. So we can cancel that out. 
And now if you look, the numbers are simplified, the signs are simplified, and it's just one time the variable A and one time the variable B. That means that we have simplified the expression. And so this is our final answer.